Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to spearfishing, you're likely going to start by shooting one of these. It's the California Sheephead and they are quite tasty. Now I recruited my buddy Matt Bond, who is Cut Professor on Instagram, a magician in the kitchen, to share with you a masterclass on how he likes to prepare them. If you haven't already done so, please hit that like button to tell YouTube to send you more spearfishing videos and let's dive in. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you what I'm going to chop the fish up with. Knife steel, cleaver, old school fillet knife, thing to scale it with. But most importantly, I'm going to wash my gear. I just uh, dipped this in bleach the other night, bleach and water to clean it. People always ask me about parasites for eating raw fish, which are a little concerned. I'm almost always more concerned about bacteria. So you want everything to be super, super clean. So I'm gonna wash this off after dipping it in bleach with some dish soap, spray it all off real clean so there's no residual detergent, which can also make you sick. Just make sure everything's clean, that I got a good clean area to prep this fish. Be right back with you. Uncle Brian asked me to talk about icing fish, all that. As Soon as I get the fish, I brain it. You see it's packed in ice, I'll talk about that in a second. That's the fish. It was 18 pounds when it had guts in it. But braining a big fish like this, right there, right where the spine and the brain meets, go forward, wiggle it, the fish is dead. Um, it was pretty dead when I shot it, but just wanna make sure it's not suffering. Uh, and then immediately, see how to show you this, I removed the gills, but on the top of the gills on all fish, the heart would be right in there. To the side of the heart, there's arteries. I cut those. Some people pull a gill. I was taught cutting them works better and it just pumps all the blood out, which gives you a cleaner tasting meat, lets it store better. If I was prepared, I could have ecogemed it by poking a hole there, running a wire down the spine and controlling or uh, destroying all the nerves. But um, that's the fish we're gonna butcher today. Ice, as soon as I get it, bled, gutted, everything like that, put on the boat, I wanna pack it in ice. And big fish like this, if I'm gonna sashimi it in particular, you need to let them rest in ice for a couple of days. Some people get concerned about fresh water touching it. And I'm sure if you're a real Epicurean, it makes a big deal. I haven't told much of a difference. I don't want it to sit and soak in fresh water. So I let the water drain out by opening up one of the valves on the bottom of the cooler. But I've had this on ice for several days now. And then I try to, on bigger fish, try to leave the collar intact. So I cut the guts from there remove the guts, cut the gills out, and that allows the meat to have better integrity. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale the fish. I don't always do this, but on sheephead, I wanna eat the skin and it's got big scales. So I'm gonna scale it before I fillet it. So I have this cool tool. Uh, believe it or not, a fork works really good. If you just take a fork and uh, that way like that on all fish. I know the Hawaii guys, the uku works fine on uku. But so I'm gonna spray it off, slimy sucker. Again, I don't trip on fresh water touching the fish. And uh, now I'm gonna scale it. Fish enough. all scaled with the $1.99 scaling tool. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the collar and the head. So all fish have two bones right here. You see people try to hack through collars. There's a little junction. A lot of fish will be a circle right here. But so I'm gonna go under that bone right there to open it up and then back the other way and I can get a clean cut, right? That's one side. And on the other side, I'm going under that little notch right there. And then I can get all the way under there, okay? To remove the collar part, I need to cut this. Some people use scissors. That probably makes a lot more sense uh, where it's attached. So I'm just gonna cut there. Oh, there, okay. And now I can take the head off. Cut Pause the collar it. off, switch knives. This is a beautiful cleaver. My friend uh, at Minehold Knives made me. Big heavy one for specifically this. That's the mark I just made uh, under the collar. That side. Some fish, it's not that difficult. These things are beefy, always watching where my fingers are. And that's it, heads off. The head is phenomenal for soup. I'll take the jaw out for a 
trophy actually to give to a friend in New York. He's gonna do a casting out of it. These killer teeth, they eat sea urchins and crustaceans, but mostly sea urchins and pick them off the rocks. But all this blubber and collagen and fat is phenomenal for soup. You saw me take the front uh, attachment of the collar off before I took the head off. Now I'm gonna take the collar and the belly off. You can see the bone is, is uh, what would you call it, exposed there. Just going under that bone. Again, knowing where my fingers are, cutting through some ribs. That's half of it, flipping it over. Same deal, see how I, see how I can, when I'm moving it, I can see where the, where the uh, joint kind of is right there. I'm gonna go under that, under that whole bone there, cutting away from myself, knowing where my fingers are, right? And there we got the collar and what's left of the heart. Clean that up a little bit. Great on the grill, great in soup, something like that. Now I'm gonna start taking the uh, the meat off. So I'm gonna start by just taking the, the belly flap off. We'll put that in soup. Same thing for the other side. Sometimes that comes off with the collar. I missed it this time. That's it, right? And then just like any fish, I'm gonna find the, where the spine is. Just go down the spine, right? Get it, get it going. And I, I tend to make an initial cut like that. Lift the meat and just go right down the spine. I'm not the fastest, I'm not slow, but I really wanna make sure when I kill something that I respect it, utilize all of it that I can. I take seriously, you know, killing these things, swimming around happily until it ran across me. And so I, I'm very appreciative of that. Okay, so on a lot of fish, you have a rib bone here. I tend to just cut through it. And if this, this knife isn't big enough, which it is, you can use the cleaver, right? And I'll take that out in a next step. Okay. First fillet. So I will, and I'll show you in a trim up part. This rib section here, you can either cut the whole thing out or go under the ribs and take it out and preserve some more of that meat. You can see nice white, you know, kind of like Japanese, the Thai or a bream, just a really nice firm white meat fish. Other side, because I'm lefty, this is my backward side. Again, I'm gonna steal the knife. I like to have them have a good edge on them. This way I go backwards, just because of the way my hands are. Same thing, just go and watching where my fingers are. And uh, down the spine, backstroke here, just to get it going. I, I heard that click, tells me I missed a couple bones, but right back on track, right? And I'm right to that rib bone again. So pop those. Second piece. The old center punch, not a good shot, but good enough to get the fish. Take the ribs out. So I'm gonna poke the knife under the ribs. See that? And then I'm going up towards the ribs. Those are off. And then I'm gonna come back up here. There you go. There's a line of bones here, like in a lot of fish. Just make a V cut there. If I want it completely boneless, I usually just leave that in because they're big bones, so who cares? But for the gram, bro. Okay. And then I'll skin this one. The other one I'm gonna leave the skin on. But to skin it in, get the knife, get the edge good on the knife. Any sponsors want to send me a new one of these? I'm ready. So I get it started. Okay. And if you have a hard time gripping it, you can poke a hole with your knife. Put your finger through there and I have a nice grip. Again, knowing where my finger is. So I get the knife started, right? And then I wanna wiggle the, 
the skin. I don't want to wiggle my knife that much. I'm basically holding my knife still and I'm wiggling the skin back and forth. And that gets me the skin off. Screwed up a little bit there. But nice big fat fillet. A couple little pieces to trim off there. But that's it. I skinned one just for the demo, don't bruise me. Again, that's the wound, I'll cut that out as I go. Probably make some ceviche, sashimi. This is the skin on one. We might do maybe like pan seared, crispy skin. Left the ribs on that one. And then rib bones. Remember I cleaned all this stuff. Skin, that I'll fry or make chicharron. Collar. Two pieces of belly, some leftover guts and stuff, not guts, but uh, the head for soup or whatever, maybe barbecue the whole thing, and the spine. Pretty good job, I think, getting most of the meat off that thing. Thanks for watching. Well, guys, I hope you learned something new today. Thanks, Matt, for giving us this masterclass. Be sure to thank him on Instagram at Cut Professor. If you did like this video, let me know in the comments how you like to prepare sheep head. Give me some recipes. I'd love to try them out. And be sure to follow for more. See you on the next video.